In the dramatic finale of Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 8, Celebrimbor's death and Sauron's victory are overshadowed by the unification of the elves. Despite a bloody battle between elves and orcs, Prince Durin's attempt to join the fight is thwarted by the greed-driven king. Meanwhile, the stranger's true identity is revealed, providing a satisfying resolution to a lingering mystery. While his father's mind and soul are corrupted by the ring, Durin discovers him deep in the mines. He threatens to chop off the king's hand unless he removes his ring as he slams against the wall, a low moan rising from beneath. When asked if he is strong enough to wield an axe against Durin's father, Durin concedes he isn't. In his memory of arm wrestling with his dad, he would let his dad a little moment of pride before slamming his hand back down. Darling, you muster up your strength once more in response to his request that he remove it. He thrashed through the wall, sending pebbles crashing into the depths below. The monarch invites everyone to witness the mountain's genuine riches. Beaming from beneath them, an amber light illuminates the dynasty of Durin as they stand there, surrounded by mithril enough to last a lifetime. It becomes evident that the king is being pulled toward the brink by a blazing bright whip the assailant is none other than the Balrog, the same one that Gandalf battles in Fellowship of the Ring. Finally, after Durin is pushed back by the power of its blade, the king takes off his ring. I stopped you from ever raising your hand. You alone were growing stronger. Pardon me, my dear son. I am King Durin, he declares, and then he lunges axe first toward the Balrog. The mine collapses as a result of the shockwave caused by their weapon clash. It's the most awesome thing that happened during the whole show. Under Rune's twilight sky, the stranger encounters the Dark Wizard, who expresses his wavering patience but unwavering faith in their friendship. Confirming their identities as two of the five Istari, the stranger reveals that he was convinced to leave the West by the Dark Wizard, acknowledging the impossibility of defeating Sauron alone. Despite allegations of the Dark Wizard's alliance with the Dark Lord, the stranger promises answers about his past, name, and staff. The Dark Wizard ensures the safety of Nori and Poppy, but their encounter with masked Easterlings leads to a violent confrontation, resulting in the death of one bandit. Criticized for his actions, the stranger asserts that pity won't defeat Sauron. Seeking to become Sauron's successor, the Dark Wizard proposes an alliance, which the stranger vehemently rejects. In a display of power, the Dark Wizard suspends boulders over the Stoor's village, threatening them before dropping them. However, the stranger intervenes, holding up the rocks and preventing any harm to the villagers. Farazan accuses Muriel of being in league with Sauron and declares the faithful traitors. As Numenor's tree sheds leaves, Elendil prepares to sail west with the faithful, but Muriel stays behind, giving him the sword Narsal and urging him to reclaim his lordship and destiny. As the orcs wreak havoc within the city and slaughter its last archers, the situation in a region deteriorates further. Orcs ambush Galadriel and her little party as they flee into the woods. She begs Adar to keep them safe in exchange for her surrendering to him. In the meantime, Celebrimbor is shot repeatedly with arrows by Sauron in an effort to get him to reveal the location of the Nine. He still refuses, despite the excruciating pain and shaking caused by the blood soaking his body. Just like I will be. The rings are out of your reach. I will soon be born on the morning shores, carried away by a wind that you will never be able to catch up with, he declares. Even if you were to die soon, Sauron would not allow it. My friend, there are ways to stay alive, he cautions. The rings of power will destroy him, according to Celebrimbor, who calls him a shadow of Morgoth, one alone proving his utter ruin. He then pins Celebrimbor against a pillar after stabbing him in the stomach with a spear. A maker I am. He claims to be the master, but Celebrimbor firmly states, No, you are a prisoner, as he nears death. The One Ring's Lord Sauron. When the orcs show up, they wonder if he is Sauron. He says, I have many names with a tear streaming down his cheek. Theo prefers being a low man in Pelagia, while Estrid reveals her husband's construction of a home for them. Kemen arrives and disrupts the colony's agreement with Miriel, refusing Estrid passage to Numenor and declaring Elendil a traitor. Isildur remains composed as Cayman transforms Pelagia into a fortress, demanding timber from its people. Isildur departs for Numenor, leaving Estrid and Theo behind, while Miriel faces Ferazon in Numenor. According to Adar, Galadriel is on board. Adar and the orcs can go to Mordor and live quietly and undisturbed there if she agrees to work with them to vanquish Sauron. 
As Adar turns around, he finds that Galadriel's ring has cured him. I went by a different name the last time I looked like this I was given a name, a name that has no significance. He proudly announces his name, Adar. This is not the power he seeks. With the ring in hand, he promises Galadriel that they can create a lasting peace in Middle-earth as a team. Once Sauron is no longer there, there will be an end to the fighting and the flames. After being wounded by Sauron, one of Adar's closest confidants from Uruk is carried in on a stretcher. Similar to the execution of the Dark Lord at the beginning of the Second Age, he stoops down, stabs Adar, and then dies. Standing behind Galadriel, Sauron gives the order for the orcs to trample him. She makes an assault attempt, but he stops her by entangling her sword with Morgoth's crown. It is then that he notices the glint of her ring in his eye. A quarrel breaks out because he wants it, and the Nine too. Even though Galadriel slices Sauron's face and kicks him over a wall, Sauron is obviously the stronger one. His transformation into Halbrand, nevertheless, diverts her attention. When she lashes out, he appears out of nowhere, taking her body and making her struggle against her own will. Right as they both plummet to the floor, he transforms into Celebrimbor for a split second. Your thoughts are visible to me. The door is still open, he says. Her pledge that the door is shut is followed by even more aggressive swordplay. He uses Morgoth's crown to pin her against a wall. If I had been in charge, I would have given you a crown. A complete and utter subjection of Middle-earth to the light of its queen would have been my ultimate goal, he declares. Even though she claims the free peoples of Middle-earth would forever fight him, he manages to regain control of the Nine as she falls to the ground. Here I want your ring. He telepathically informs Galadriel that it is her ring. She removes it, gives it to the recipient, and then clutches it tightly. You want to make Middle-earth whole again? She tells him, heal yourself before she falls backward off the cliff, sacrificing herself and escaping his grasp. As they stand on the ground of Eregion, Gilgalad and Elrond are compelled to observe the orcs destroying all documentation of Celebrimbor's accomplishments, converting his legacy to ash. They begin to fight back when the dwarves show up. Navi informs Elrond that the prince is in mourning, even though Elrond believes he sees Durin. Galadriel, whose immortal soul was wounded by Morgoth's crown yet is being enticed into the underworld, is located by their arrival. Gil-galad is helpless without Elrond's ring, so he wears it. Nori and Poppy assist the Stores in rebuilding their village, but they accept that some losses are irreparable. The Stores express gratitude to the stranger, whom they refer to as the Grand Elf before embarking on their migration. Alone in the village, the stranger discovers his staff and realizes that he was meant to choose friendship, help others, and find his true identity. Tom Bombadil reveals that the stranger's name is Gandalf. Meanwhile, the Dark Wizard's identity remains unknown. In Khazad Dum, Navi informs Durin about Eregion survivors and offers aid, but they face internal conflicts and challenges to the throne. The Elven Rings keep Galadriel safe as she awakens. Although it is in its early stages, they are undeniably in Rivendell, even though they never use that name. Galadriel is reunited with Arendir after receiving her ring back from Elrond. There is a choice before Gil-galad face Sauron head-on or prepare for defenses the sword or the shield. Galadriel advises them to teach their people that it is light, not strength, that triumphs over darkness. The sun is still shining, she remarks. At the sight of the survivors below, Gil-galad brandishes his sword, conflict has broken out. 